and uh, I'm Mike R. Um, here's what we're going to talk about a little bit. Who am I? What are extensions? Why care? And sort of tool release. Um, a little bit about me. I graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology with a degree in computing security back in 2013. And I am a sponsorship coordinator. So that's why the last talk, um, I'll get the slides from him and be able to de determine how best to disseminate that to everybody. Um, best fashion according to everybody. I think it might either be through the website or um, through a common Dropbox or something. Not exactly Dropbox, but some source um, along with the videos. Um, just a little bit of history of extensions. You know, extensions are something that, you know, that can be used to modify the behavior or add some features to the browser. You know, it's current browser share of Chrome having the majority of people just using it. Um, so that's why I decided to focus on Chrome. This has got 55% of the market. Um, also, as I showed there, that Chrome released in 2009, but Firefox and Internet Explorer, and then now Safari is going to start having browser extensions. So it's not just one browser. It's starting to become more pervasive. Um, obviously not on the phones, but on the laptops and desktop platforms. So um, why care? Um, well. I've seen some Stanford and MIT studies that have shown that the extensions are overprivileged. Like I think it was the majority of the top 100 extensions have been given too, ma too much privilege. Um, and the, in the past, at least, and I know they're getting a little better, the security model did not do enough to protect the users um, to mitigate things such as cross-site scripting and necessarily stealing data. Um, and some thing that we've started to see now, particularly over the last, compared to the past few years that I've been looking at this, is that we've started to see that these extensions have become targets. You know, we see these examples of, you know, say Adblock Plus, literally that was like last week, where the 37,000 people downloaded a fake Adblock Plus. So and I think all they did was literally just put it under the same name. So I mean, it's, if you can't tell that it's under the same name, then how are you going to tell how secure it is? Um, you know, we had the Cisco on WebEx remote command execution. Um, no, they did a great job with it. They fixed it like right away. So uh, something like that would be really great. Um, they're a great example of that where if you find something wrong with it, you fix it. I actually use WebEx and that extension in my work. So and you know, you've got the last two, which are um, people really hijacking the developers, which is a different route to hijacking the extensions rather than going after the extensions themselves, but hijacking the developers because they've got developer accounts. So um, you've got some industry efforts. Um, Google is now putting out more security features and tools to help users basically be able to make that decision of what they can do to l analyze and look at those extensions, but they're really new. They're, I just looked at the, just saw this a few days ago. Um, and you have some enterprise tools um, that are great if you're an enterprise, but they're sometimes more focused on the app side of it, because they'll also plug in with your Google Drive environment and other uh, Google features, such as uh, slides and uh, Excel, to be able to look for things such as social security numbers um, or maybe credit card numbers, but not necessarily focused towards extensions and extensions themselves that don't use the Google environment. Um, and a little bit about the tool. Um, it was written in Python. Uh, and it takes an extension that the user installs, reviews the code, and assigns a score to some of the manifest options. And the manifest is just the table of contents and basically says this is what is going to be done. And it does this because uh, when a user installs a Chrome extension, it copies all the resources to their desktop. So it's not pulling anything from Google. Okay, just want to make that sure. It's not the only thing that it is is that they're coming from the Google Store and you're running it in Chrome. But that's it. Um, and this doesn't. And this is not meant to be a tool that like does anything bad for the app developers as well. It's just giving us, the users, an opportunity to look at what is being used. Okay? Um, and here are some of the important security related features that um, you know, we uh, would look at now and would want to look at going forward. The permissions, the content security policy, 
uh, are, are two things that I definitely take a look at right now. This is our, I would say, most important. I'll show you why in a minute. Um, the background, the scripts that run in the background, sometimes you know, it's really unknown what happens and when they run. They can run in the beginning, before the, the page is loaded, after the page is loaded, or while it's loading. So it's uh, really interesting, as well as content scripts as well. So they're JavaScript files that uh, run in the web page. So they can do almost anything as well. So, um, And I say that the permissions earlier, um, these permissions will not provide a prompt. So if you're going to install a Chrome extension, it will not tell you that it's looking at your cookies. Okay, And it will not tell you that it's looking at your web, uh, web browsing history. That's what the web, requ web requests and the web request blocking are. They are basically allowing the extension to look at all the websites you visit and edit them in flight. So essentially, it could be looking at your cookies and all your browsing history without you ever knowing it. So in theory, yes. This is, this is straight from the Chrome, Chrome store, Chrome's website, the Google website. Yeah, this is a copy paste. That's why this is, what my, this is what it looks like when I write it. This is a screen grab right from the Google website. So, uh, yeah. Um, an interesting find that I had was um, from Cami HQ. Um, I am not saying anything bad about this, but just t uh, back on the theme of like, look what you can find when you're just looking at things. Um, this is a great tool that is used to edit your PDFs, but it has access to like the, your file sh uh, to a file share. Why does it need YouTube video access if you're editing PDFs? Like I don't know why. And also a uh, billing software. I can understand that you want it to tie in, but it has two different billing softwares and some file sharing. I'm like, okay, that's a little bit odd to me. Um, and over on the left over here, um, mouse. Uh, where the mouse is over here, you can see all the different um, permissions that it has and requests access to. So it requests access to some of that web requests and web blocking, which I mentioned earlier, are not going to be notified. So you're not going to get, it's not going to tell you that it's accessing it because here it says it's going to visit it but not edit it, so communicate. Um, Yeah, I'll show, I'll show you in a demo, but on what it, as I said, it, um, it downloads it, and on the, it, there's a, uh, if you guys look at the files for Chrome on your machine, it will have downloaded in, the, in those locations, and then you can simply go in there and look at the manifest.json file, and then literally go, and go through it. This, the code isn't anything special. Um, some, something else that I found, some other interesting finds was, remember I mentioned the Cisco WebEx vulnerability a while ago? Yeah, they have since fixed the issue that, uh, the issue, and what I'm about to say is, but when it, right as it came out, there was no content security policy. So you theoretically had a cross-site scripting vulnerability that had no restrictions on it. So, but they have since fixed it. Um, you know, going forward, I would like to analyze those content scripts and background scripts, as well as the URLs that the system pulls in. Um, because I said it, the content security policy gives explicit access to what it can pull data from. But I currently don't have the uh, capacity to analyze it right now. Um, so we'll give a little demo here. Um, so here I've got a tool right here. And then I'll run it. We're going to look at Kami. I don't know why, just easy. Um, so I type in the GUID, which is the ID of the extension. I've already installed it on my machine just to save some time. Um, and no need to see me literally hit three buttons to say I want to install this. Um, but there, it's going through it. It's saying this is version 2.0.9165. It's going to it's reviewing the background data and the content scripts. And then let's exit. As you can see here, it's got a results.txt file. And oh, let's see how it's uh, changed in the last little bit. It looks like it also accesses your Google Drive. So that's a, an interesting note. And it's, it still looks like still looks like they're accessing all those websites there, guys. You can see here, there's, um, and they're also adding some unsafe evals so into, the, into what they're resourcing and what they're calling from. 
So the content security policy is literally like almost like a whitelist to what resources is calling from. So those are a lot of resources. And um, as you can sort of see here, it's 14 websites, two different sources. Um, so what I mean by sources is like a guide for what sources is calling from. There's like object sources, image sources, uh, and then there's like script sources. So uh, it only has two restrictions on two of those. One unsafe coding practice, which is the unsafe eval, and it calls from itself twice. So, and here's a little score on it. Um, I assign scores for zero being the strictest, and one calling from itself, uh, and three for unsafe evals and unsafe uses of code. So, I gave it a score of 16.5, and. Um, as I said, I was, wanted to look at websites. I sort of gave it some options for additional sco scoring. All I did was I added up the score and divided by the number of items, so 16.5, which is considerable considering that you've got a large number of resources, as well as it looks like they've added an AWS bucket in there. Who knows what that AWS bucket is doing? Because it's an extension, you don't really have access into what it is doing. So, um, and permissions. I mentioned earlier, I have each permission as well as a number. Uh, this is just an example for what I think that they're worth. You guys can change them in the code. Um, and then what they actually do, a description. So for those, for those, if you need to explain it to somebody else, it's an easy explanation and it's right there. Um, and then I took it, took everything, like the total risk, and divided it so the average score is 1.75, which is medium is I did it from one to three. Um, one is low, two is medium, three is high. Um, I apologize for the small text there. I'm supposed to try to read it. Um, I, I'm gonna make this available. Um, I'm not sure if I like the name of um, oh, uh, Silence Packham yet. I just, I, sometimes I have trouble coming up with names for things. So, but I'm gonna make it available. I'm gonna, um, I mentioned besides PDX and I'll make it available to the public going forward, so uh, are there any questions?